it is a useless fact. I don't know, I figure I just throw that one in there for free. Google will help you out a lot. But anyway, this is what lambs are used for. They're used to make covering, to make clothes. The most use of lambs, I'm sheep, come on now, help me out, is wool. Sheep can take care of themselves, but here's why you feed sheep, because what they eat depends on what type of wool they produce. And Jesus was saying, Peter, I'm not just concerned about believers surviving. I'm concerned about what's produced out of their life. Can it cover other people? You need to make sure that they're fed the right thing. So that as they cover their city, they're covering it with the presence of God and not just McDonald's. <laughs> Come on now. That was help them out. You know what you need to be fed as a mature believer? A heart for destiny. Let me say it a different way. A heart that's not focused on me, but focused on God. How would you use me in this city? This is what Jesus said in verse 18. He says, let me tell you what I'm talking about, Peter. He says, when you're long, most assuredly I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself, you closed yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hand and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. Translation, Peter, it's time to put your, put your big boy pants on. It's time to grow up. You're not young anymore. Your focus now is to prepare other people so that they can have an impact in their city. You know, a lot of times people say it's the pastor's job to build everybody up. That's not the truth. The Bible says it's the pastor's job to equip the believers. Somebody say me to do the work of the ministry. Somebody say, oh, yeah. Say it like you really mean to say, oh, yeah. This is what God is saying. He's saying, hey, you're not a baby Christian anymore. You know, when you're a baby Christian, you dress yourself and you kind of just make it up as you go along. You go wherever you want. You ever seen a two-year-old dress themselves or a three-year-old? A mess. It's worse when they do their own hair. <laughs> Maybe you didn't have little sisters. They walk, are you leaving like that? Yeah, I did it all by myself. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> but God says you're not there anymore. This is the point in your life where you don't wake up and walk out the door and do what you want to do, but you wake up and you say, God, what would you have me do? God, what do you want me to put on today? God, where do you want to lead me? And here's the thing, that you have that same influence on the people around us. There's a purpose that God has for this city of Baltimore. It's not just about our lives, but there's a purpose that God has for this city. And he is looking for a people, a mouthpiece to say to those that we're connected to, there's more to your life than survival. God has a destiny, a purpose for you. Can I throw one more thing at you and then we're going to get out of here? Is that okay? I wonder one day if you guys say no what I would do. You always say yes, but if you ever say no, I'd probably just ignore you. But anyway, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, says this, And so, dear brothers, I plead with you, and this is in the New Living, to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And here's the key part. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. This is what God has planned for you. His good pleasing, and perfect will. I believe there's three levels of God's will for your life. Good, pleasing, and perfect. Good is when you build a relationship with God. When you as a lamb come to God and says, God, I need you, take control of my life, God says, that's good. Pleasing is when the kingdom of God begins to be established in every area of your life. Your marriage starts reflecting the glory of God, your career, your finances, your health. God says, I'm pleased with that. But perfect is when you begin to fulfill the particular plan and destiny that God has for you. That word perfect in the original language, it doesn't mean without flaw, 
or perfection, this is what it means, accomplished for what it was created to be accomplished. Fulfilling the unique destiny for our lives. This is where God wants to take us. Not that we have a relationship with him only or that we see him in our lives, but that we wake up every morning and say, God, this is what you've called me to do at this time, in this city, in this moment. And he's calling for us to establish that with each person that we have influence with. Somebody say amen. We're going to play one quick video, and then I'm going to come back with you. You can throw that up. I am in complete awe at all that God has done up to this point at Destiny Harvest Church. You know, as he laid this church on my heart, even as he called me into ministry, more importantly, as he gave me a passion for this city, I would have never imagined coming to this point. You know, as you see something and you pray for something and actually see it come to pass in the natural, it literally takes your breath away. And to think that this is just the beginning. There is so much more that God wants to do through us in the next year. And even in the next years to come, God is looking to do so much to this city. I truly believe that God is birthing revival in this city through Destiny Harvest Church. I am so inspired, not only by what God is doing, but by the people that he has placed in this house, the family that we call Destiny Harvest, to see people give of their time, of their resources, of their energy, so that others can come to Christ, so that others can have the same encounter, can discover the destiny that God has called them to reach. It is literally, it's just inspiring. There is nothing like it, and I am so excited. I'm actually speechless just thinking about all that God is looking and will do through us. You know, the Bible says in Psalm chapter 2, it says that we have become his children and today he has become our father. And in verse 8, it says, ask of me and I will give you the nations. You know, when you think about asking God for an entire country, it is completely mind blowing. But then it makes sense because God is just as mind blowing as the request. And I'm not even quite sure about asking God for a nation right now, but this is what I am sure that he said to ask him for the impossible, ask him for what seems almost too big to accomplish. And Destiny Harvest Church, this is what I'm asking God for. I'm asking God for this city. I'm asking God that he would have mercy on our city, that he would use us to birth revival, to establish the kingdom of God here, to help men and women, families, encounter God and fulfill the destiny that he has called us to reach. I'm asking God, for this city. I'm believing that God is looking to do something great in this city and he's just looking for men, for women, for children that would say, here am I God, send me. Use me for your glory. And this is what I'm asking. I'm asking as a church that we would make that our prayer. That we would literally turn to God and say, God, here we are. God, use us for your glory, God. Use us to impact this city. Maybe even beyond anything that we could think of doing by ourselves. But God, as we come together as the body of Christ, God, use us to birth revival in this city. I'm asking that you would pray like you've never prayed before for our city. I'm asking that you would serve, that you would use your gifts, your talents, your abilities to build the kingdom of God. Maybe you're not quite sure where you can plug in, but ask God, God, what can I do, God, to establish your kingdom in this city? And I'm asking that you would give sacrificially, that you would give like you've never given before so that we can see this city won for the glory of God. 
I'm standing here overlooking the city, actually at a pretty historical point. This is where the house of Charles Carroll was, and this served as one of the major places of resources, of food, of agriculture, and even jobs as far back as the 1700s. This is literally one of the major places where this city was fed. And as I'm standing here, my prayer is, God, just as you use this point to serve and to feed this city for hundreds of years, God, I'm asking that you would use our church, God, to serve and to feed this city for your glory, God, not just naturally, God, but that a spiritual revival would birth out of Destiny Harvest that would impact this city, God, and would literally shift the course of history as we know it. I'm telling you, that sounds huge, that sounds big, but let me tell you something. We serve a huge, a big God, and I dare you to believe with me that God is going to birth revival in this city that maybe it may be 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now. It may be even something that we're setting up for our kids or our grandkids, but I know at some point we are going to look up or somebody is going to look up and say that this city has been transformed by the power of God. That's what we're giving for, that's what we're serving for, and that's what we're believing for.